What you're about to watch is a special private training session for people who bought a copy of my book, Built to Serve. Enjoy. And it's great to be here again, insiders. Welcome, everybody. Uh, again, I made this group because I wanted you to get value and results in the book, that it's not just another book that sits on the shelf, but uh, things are actually happening in your business, in your life, for your movement. And so we're going to do the question that you guys voted on, then Q&A with you guys, and then Zan, uh, who's our official Built to Serve coach, can keep the room going if you have <laughs> extra questions, extra time, need extra love and support beyond our 25 minutes together. So the topic was from Salima. Salima's in the house. Salima's in the house. Yeah. Awesome. How long would you take and what exact steps would you take to build a list of a few hundred people, serve and launch what they need? So as a starting point, I would pick a platform. Where do you like to engage? You know, if you're going to swim to YouTube, Ooh. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, if you're talking about how do I get a few hundred people to know about me, where do you like to engage? Clubhouse is what we talked about today in Movement Makers. Where do you like to engage? And then you can have a little bit of content, but I think the best thing, if you're just trying to build a couple hundred people, is to go and connect with people on, on other people's accounts. So you're leaving comments on YouTube, you're leaving comments on Instagram, you're, you're responding to people on Twitter, you're joining people's rooms on Clubhouse, you're DMing people on Instagram, right? You pay attention to the platform, just pick one platform and then give as much value as possible so that they want to connect with you. They want to follow you. They want to see what you're up to. They want, they love the energy, right? A lot of this is just an energy game. Part of why you guys are here too. It's like, there's an energy every week that we get to do this, you know, with me, with Zane, with the whole group, uh, that people need that and people need your energy. They need the, the love and the, the, not, yes, the strategies, but they need the hope and the belief that you can give them by hanging out with you. They feel fired up to go do something else. That it doesn't just have to be motivation, rah, rah, but just the fact that you're there listening, supporting, cheering them could be enough to have them take one extra step. So that's what we do at the beginning. You start leaving comments, thanking people, saying hi, giving your opinion, feedback, thoughts, suggestions, and people start to connect with you and follow you. The next thing I would do, again, just to answer this question from Salima that you guys voted on, is I would try to get on some calls with them to figure out what they're struggling with. If you're trying to figure out what they're, you know, how can you serve and launch what they need, get on some calls, either Zoom calls to get to know them better. It's like, hey, thank you for following me. I love to learn more about what your business is all about and how I might be able to give some guidance, feedback, help, suggestions. So Zoom calls are a great way to get to know people. I default to public stuff. So I, don't, I barely do any private Zoom calls. If somebody's asking me for help, um, if, it's, if it's like, a high, high up person. Okay, fine. We'll do a private Zoom. But for the most part, it's like, okay, let's do this on live. Let's go live on Instagram and figure this out. Or join me on the live stream where we do, I do my gaming with, with Zane and Drew four days a week at night. Come in, come in live and ask us questions. Uh, or if it's somebody in this group, it's like, hey, come to the Insiders Readers group and ask your question. And the more that you actually start connecting with people, the more you'll start to figure out what their challenges are and how you can help them. There comes this moment where, this is why I love recommending doing coaching first before anything else. So for anybody who wants to write a book, do speaking, have courses, have materials, all of that. If you can start with coaching, that lets you try out your ideas on somebody more than you. Because it worked a certain way for you. It's not gonna work that way for everybody else. You have the way that it worked for you. And there's a certain number of people who can fit into that exact same way. But as you start talking to people and coaching them and working with them, you'll find other paths to be able to help them, which then makes your book more powerful, which then makes your courses more powerful, your training more powerful. So as a quick example, um, when I was writing Your One Word, my first book, this is the book. This right here was the original book. This thing is crazy. This is 140,000 words that we then cut Half the book got cut to 70,000 words, but this is the, one of the original 30 copies of the book that I printed off and, and gave to my test audience to read. Um, one of the things in your one word was helping people find their one word, which is their who, right? That, that transition to becoming your who. There was one guy I met in a coffee shop named Derek here in Toronto, and I was helping him through the who process. It's okay, this is it, this is easy, here you go. Let's ask him questions. 
the five questions, you know, you, what did you love about your parents and who's your favorite teacher and your favorite movie and all of these things, right? The usual questions that work for, that work for people. He's like, I can't get it. I, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. And so I'm struggling sitting there in the Starbucks trying to help him figure out what his who was. And then I realized, okay, let's just try something out of left field. How about we go negative? Instead of all the positive things, how about we go negative? Like who are the, not the people who you love and why, who are the people that you hate? And not that they're bad people, but, but who do you hate or what is it about them that you hate? Like think about the people, your worst teacher, the, the pe- person at school that you hated the most, the colleague or boss that you hated the most, that you don't want to spend time with them. Great. What are, what are those characteristics? And then the opposite. So when we figure that out, that's, that's what I call the anti word. And then the opposite is, is your who is your one word. Um, and so that coaching process led to a change in how I wrote the book. Because for me, I, it's easy to default to the positive. I don't think about the people I hate. I'd have to struggle to go back and like, huh, who do I hate and why? But for some people will, and it's easier for them to figure out their path. So ultimately, I, you know, I want to serve. You guys want to serve as well. So that's where you've got your methodology that you know work for you and can work for a small percentage of people. But when you start actually talking to people, coaching them, helping them, you'll say what worked for you, but it's not going to quite fit. That hat won't quite fit, you know? <laughs> so the more that you can do the coaching, you'll get a couple more ideas of how to be able to reach people by workshopping it with them. And then that makes you a better coach, but it makes your products better, your books better, your, your services better, your, your everything. It makes it all better because now you've actually worked with people through it as opposed to only having helped yourself. So the more you can actually start to get some feedback, that may feel slow at the beginning because you've got to talk to people. But all of those things help make you better for your ultimate ambitions of when I'm speaking on stage, if there's, I, I did one yesterday, we did a virtual coaching summit, it was like a thousand people or something in the room. Um, when I'm talking to them, I know the messages work because I've, I've said the same message to a thousand other people before on the one-on-ones, right? So that's what allows you to scale and, and hit a message. So talking to a group of people is really just talking to a bunch of individuals. Um, so I hope that helped. That was a fun little topic, Salima. I hope that gave you some value. Whoever's got a question, raise your hand on mic and let's do it. Ev- Evan is ready to go. Okay, what do you got, man? I do have a question. Um, I was saying before you got on, I've had very limited time because I've just been so busy in my business and can't find employees, nobody wants to work, whatever. So the little bit of content I have done, I feel like I'm repeating myself um, because of like, you know, my story and kind of like what my core is, Mm -hmm. but it feels stale to myself, like on how to mix up the same message if that is your message without sounding repetitive to those of you who might follow on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a couple things. New, but not turn off the the existing. I know. I I hear you, man. Listen, I've done over 10,000 videos about belief. <laughs> there's a lot of repetition. Like there's only so many unique stories you can share about believe, you know, 10,000 times. So a couple of things that helped me. One, um, recognize that even though it's, it feels new for you, it, it's not new for the audience, right? So there's always new people who've never heard this message before and they need to hear it. So just the, the fact that you said something two weeks ago, a lot of people haven't heard it yet. And the way you know, the YouTube algorithm and Instagram algorithm and every algorithm works, it's only hitting a small percentage of the same people every time. So you have to love the students more than the material, right? So if you like, how to teach or how, do the, how does your favorite teacher growing up teach the same history class every year for 20 years and not just go bored out of their mind? It's the same content. It's because it's not about the content, it's about the student. It's different students every time. They love the teaching process. And so it's about getting out of your head and into the audience's head. Like they haven't heard this before. So I'm going to show up for them because I know you and I've seen you in action. And I see how much you care and love about people. And I see how much you're always trying to raise your hand and like get involved to serve and share your story. You're just, if it's just you in, an, in, a, in your office by yourself or in the car or whatever, it can sometimes be hard to make that connection. Or if it was somebody, if Angel was sitting there in front of you and you're sharing your you know, recovery story, it wouldn't feel like it's repetition because you see Andrew's eyes light up, right? And so it's just trying to think to that connection to the people who are behind the camera. That's one. Two, 
uh, just because they heard it two weeks ago, doesn't mean they don't still need the message, right? It's like, especially with what you're doing with addiction recovery, one day somebody might feel great. And then next day they're back to where they used to be. They need you every day. And like for everybody watching, people need your hope, your inspiration every day because they don't have those role models in their lives. So just because they heard it two weeks ago, doesn't mean, okay, I got it now. Now I'm good. Now I never need to hear it again. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that'd be amazing if that was actually how it worked, but that's not unfortunately how it works. So most people haven't heard the message before, but even if they have, it doesn't mean that they still don't need it again today. And so again, it's, it, you might be getting bored with it, but it's putting yourself in their shoes so that go back to who you used to be when you're lying and hiding things and, you know, cheating on your values and all that stuff like that Evan needs this Evan, you know, right now. Um, and then the third thing is just try to challenge yourself to come up with new stories just as a skill to learn. So when I'm making my videos, sometimes it always relates back to foundation story and depending on what the topic is, but I'll often push myself to try to think, okay, what's happened in the past week where I can share something. So you've been thinking about what happened to Nina this morning, you know, and like having to postpone movement makers, at least me and like rush to make all that happen. That could be a story for a video. So it's always a challenge to say, okay, it may not be as big a deal as me, like breaking my neck and going and continuing the tour. But instead of always telling the break in the next story, I could tell this new story. It doesn't matter as much for the audience. I think it's just more for you as a speaker, as, as a challenge to think about, okay, where do I, where do you still doubt yourself? Even though you've been sober for seven years or whatever it is, you know, where do you still find challenges? Where do you, when have you maybe almost thought about going back or falling down and, and sharing those kinds of stories of something that's happened, you know, recently, um, just as a fun challenge and improving yourself as a speaker. Yeah. It was called COVID. Yeah. <laughs> three, uh, seriously, three and a half years. Uh, I, I came close twice. Really did. Well, so share that story, right? Yeah. Like what happened that led to that? And it may not be, it's not as bad as when you were in the depths of it, but people, this is why like showing the vulnerability is really important because people could look at you and say, well, look at him. He's got it all figured out. He's got this, you know, great business, this, you know, fancy suit on his beautiful office. He's got it all figured out. It's like, no guys, I almost went, I almost relapsed because this happened because I lost a deal or because like whatever was the thing that happened to you, people connect with that. And it's another great story to share. So COVID's great, but even this week, something has happened this week that, again, it may not be all the way down to relapsing, but where you doubted yourself, where you didn't do your morning routine, where you didn't show up like you wanted to, where you didn't work out as hard as you wanted to, you didn't make the calls like you said you were going to do, like wherever you disappointed yourself or let yourself down or had some negative thoughts, that message is still going to be super valuable. And it's a, it's a nice challenge to, to force yourself to tell a new story. It doesn't mean you forget about the old stuff. That's still super valuable, but I like it. I think it's a good challenge for yourself just to continue to improve as a speaker. Rick, what do you got? Hey everyone. Uh, one of the thing you did talk about was the, the laminated like golden uh, pyramid that has the three level of engagement. Oh, that, yeah, like, okay. Okay. The bottom one was Zen the, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Zen, Zen should have it. Uh, the bottom one Please. is bottom layer, layer is yes, yes, yes. Uh, personal connection and then partnership and then thought leader content mm -hmm. creation. Can any part of that pyramid actually be, I guess, offloaded, you know, hire someone to do mm -hmm. any part of it? Or should I still be, you know, controlling all three parts of it? Um, all of it can. At some point, you have to be involved in the process. So, for example, uh, at the top is thought leadership. So, you could off you could delegate out the editing and the research and the scripting and the caption and the thumbnails and the, like whatever. But you have to be on camera, or you have to like your soul has to yeah. be in the thing. Uh, yeah. If it's going to be videos, if it's going to be written, you could work with a writer, but your soul is the is the asset. So you have to sit there. You still have to be involved to like, what is the message going to be to, to get it out? Right. Sure. But everything else can be delegated partnerships. You could have somebody reach out and 
ask, hey, would you like to partner with Rick? Would you like to have him on your show? Would you like to hear more about what Rick is doing, right? But at some point, like Rick has to <laughs> show right, up right. to do the thing. Right. Okay, so just the admin part of it where someone will make the call to like basically, yeah, to schedule the time with me. So I still need to step in to do the, be act the actual partner, right? Yeah, you're, you're the heart, like you're the heart. So the heart has to come out. So if you yeah. have a budget to hire somebody part-time or full-time, then you look at what do I like the least? Here's what, here are the steps that have to happen. What do I not want to do in here? What do I like the least? And that's when I, what I want to give up, right? So I, I, I did not like video editing. It was my least favorite thing to do. So it was the first person that I hired was a part-time video editor. And that let me move from a video a week to a video a day mm -hmm. because now I didn't have to worry about editing. I could give that to somebody else to do. Yep. But I still had to be in front of the camera, yep. right? If you're going to be the leader. So um, yeah, so just make a list and whatever you don't like the, whatever you don't like the most, as soon as you have a budget, you delegate that stuff out. Okay. All right. Great. Um, second part, uh, second question, I guess, uh, very completely different, um, you know, regarding, you know, your belief, you know, and you yeah. know, salsa dancing, they're like completely different thing, right? I mean, you know, you are being quoted by Ed Milet to be the modern day, um, um, you know, uh, Napoleon Hill, mm -hmm. right? As, as a beginner, you know, I'm building my YouTube channel and all that stuff. Naturally, I would want to build videos that are about my business, what I'm good at. Um, but I would have thought on your on your end, you would build videos on salsa dancing, teaching people how to dance. But instead, you're DJing a lot of all these um, mental, well, not mental strength, but more like, uh, uh, you know, a personal growth belief type of videos to mm -hmm. like basically into your brand. Can you share shed some light on you know the thought process on this or like what should I do next type of thing? Yeah, so I mean it was super humbling when when I met Ed at his house. Um, you know he invited me over and we talked strategy and he said you're like the modern day Napoleon Hill. It's like that's amazing. Can I use that? Can I quote you on that? <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, and, and shout out to Evan Tinsman who's got Napoleon Hill right there on his wall behind him. There, that's the giant faced, you know, Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Um, I think the advantage you have is going all in on you. So I'm, I'm always Evan Carmichael. I'm always trying to spread belief. There's a lot of different ways that I do it. So in some rooms, I'm the YouTube guy. In some rooms, I'm the I'm the entrepreneur DJ guy. In some rooms, I'm the salsa guy. In some rooms, I'm the League of Legends business guy. It's all me. And I think that's great. Like, I think you should have a hard time explaining who you are and what you do, right? Like when somebody says, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Who are you? Uh, I, think, I think it should be hard to explain it. If, where if you just say, well, I'm an accountant or something, you're like, nobody likes those boxes. Um, now I have a lot of different channels because we have so much content. But if, if I was you, I would explore with different kinds of content. Like I like the DJ stuff. And that was Gary V who called me that, right? So I didn't come up with that name either. It's like, you're like the content DJ who inspires people. It's like, ooh, can I use that? <laughs> um, that's what- yeah, of course, you me. use them and then you put it on your banner. So that's why, that's how I'm able to re-quote it back to you, right? That Yeah. You know. Well, because I, I, I forgot what they said too. So it's nice to have the quote there as a reminder <laughs> for me too. Um, but that's what saved me, right? Like modeling success is the thing that saved me. And so now I, I try to bring that to my channel so that other people can hopefully learn from it as well. Um, salsa dancing is how I met Nina. And, and you know, I, I run the largest salsa dance studio, at least in Canada, um, mm -hmm. which is struggling right now because of COVID. Like it's the least COVID friendly business in the world. Uh, so like the YouTube stuff is blowing up and the salsa business is on life support. Like let's <laughs> get vaccinated and try to make this business stay alive. Um, but even the salsa business was never about how to dance salsa. So if you, oh, I, I taught at the school for a couple of years as well. I taught the highest level class. Um, it's how I met my wife, Nina. And every now and then on Mover Makers, we'll do a little salsa dancing in advance when Zan plays some salsa music for us, which is super fun. Um, but if you were to join the class, it was still believe. 
like joining my salsa class, I'm going to teach you some moves, but I'm going to, I'm going to really teach you how to believe in yourself more. Because when you learn something that you didn't think you could do, you leave a more confident person. Like I'll show you how to, well, demo this crazy move that you've never seen before. And you look at it and said, wow, that's, I'm never going to be able to do that. And then an hour later, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's believe you don't join the school just to learn moves. You learn the school to build friends, become more confident and believe in yourself more. So there's a lot of different ways. And why did I do that? Because that's how I, I gain belief in doing that myself. Because I went to a salsa school and I sucked and then I got better and I learned and then that gave me more belief in myself. So everything I do is believe. I just have different routes to do it. I'll do it through DJing content. I'll do it through my own thought leadership. I'll do it through movement makers. I'll do it through writing books. I'll do it through League of Legends. We answer business questions and help people believe while you can watch me play games. I do it through salsa dancing. Everything is belief. And so whatever your who is, it should flow through everything that you make. And it's okay that some people, no, not everybody knows that I can salsa dance. That's okay. When I go on shows, they're like, how do you want me to introduce you? to my audience. It's like, I don't, whatever you want. You don't have to read my official bio. You know, if, if you love that I made that one video three years ago and that changed your life, perfect. That's, that's how I want you to introduce me, All right? And so as long as, like the thing that's consistent is belief. Mm. Everybody hopefully knows me for belief. That's what I want people, hey, if you want more belief, go connect with Evan, follow Evan, be a part of his universe because you're gonna get more belief. If you want to get a copy of Built to Serve and join us live for our next training with me to ask your questions, you can go get the book right there next to me, right there. I'll see you there. I'll see you to get the book. It's a good one. Much love.